CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. Obviously, I suppose a little bit disappointing that we couldn't get uh, the scoring rates up uh, a bit more. Um, credit to Australia, I thought the way they bowled as a unit, again, on a, you know, it's a pretty good pitch. Um, there's no point going away from that. Um, but yeah, disappointing, and I suppose more disappointing is the fact that we've got a lot of starts there, certainly from the top six, and not going on is probably what we've done a little bit. It's been a bit of a trend for a while now. So, um, I mean, the positive is that we've got Kev there tomorrow morning. Um, and, you know, if he has a good couple of hours, then, you know, things can change very quickly. Um, but disappointing, I suppose, that no one's gone on and got a really big score. Uh, it was I mean, real go slow, wasn't it? I mean, what, what was the re was that just really good Australian bowling or were you just trying to be patient given the circumstances of the series so far? I don't think so. It's, it's difficult to speak for anyone else. I think personally, you know, your intent is always to go and score runs. It's not to survive. Um, if you try and survive, then you're going to get one at, at some point. You have to put pressure on the bowlers. And, um, you know, for me personally, I was trying to do that. Um, but Australia were very good and they bowled well in partnerships again, as they have done all series. So, um, you know, runs weren't the easiest, but you have to earn the right to score runs. And like I said, hopefully, you know, Kev's done a lot of hard work today and he can uh, push on tomorrow. Uh, just on yourself, I mean, you're, you're vice captain, uh, obviously in the absence of Matt Pryor. I, I think it was pretty much expected, but still... A big call to leave Matt out, given you know what he's achieved for England uh, in the last few years. Absolutely, he's a, a world-class player, and you know he's been you know a great uh, player for us and uh, the real heartbeat of the side really for a long time for us. So obviously disappointing for him to um, you know to, to miss out. Uh, but again, it gives an opportunity to Johnny Bairstow, a young cricketer with a lot of talent. So you know it's uh, good to have competition for places in, in all departments. Ian, what was your reaction to Australia sending you in? Um, probably a little bit, uh, obviously listening to Michael Clark at the toss, probably uh, we expected, uh, certainly if we won the toss, we were going to bat. Uh, knowing Australia, I, I would have expected them to bat. But again, um, you know, when we were here last time, you know, bowling first, was, was it worked for us. Um, so wasn't a little bit surprised that there was you know, talk about whether you'd bat or bowl. But um, I think it was a pretty good wicket, to be honest, on day one. I, I think you expect on, you know, in a five-day game that there's always going to be a bit there till lunch. Um, and you know, I think it proved to be a very good wicket all the way through the day, but you know, certainly when the sun came out. Ian, what about Kevin's innings? It looked like he was struggling with... Well, can you tell us what he was struggling with, actually? Was he a bit unwell? Uh, to be honest, I don't know, actually. He looked like he swallowed a fly or something, but I haven't got a clue. I'll have to ask him when I go back in. So. Um, but, but, you know, he, he took time out. He was on his haunches and, and looked like he wasn't kind of his normal sort of fluid and fluent self. I mean, what does that say about him, the way he managed to kind of tough it out and, and, and get those runs today? Oh, I was brilliant. Like you said, he probably wasn't at his most um, fluent as, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, us have been on this trip, to be honest. So, you know, it's great science to see him scrap it out. Um, you know, and, and like I said, hopefully he's one guy in world cricket that, if it does click, um, tomorrow morning will be, you know, some, it could be some good cricket. If he comes, you know, certainly aggressively, then, you know, I think it'll be a great test cricket to watch tomorrow morning. He's been the subject of a lot of questions over the course of this series, having not perhaps produced some of his best form. Um, he has become England's fourth highest run scorer of all time. I mean, what does that kind of say about his career and, and where he stands? I think he's outstanding, to be honest with you. Obviously, he... He does play an aggressive game and sometimes, like you said, at the wacky, you get caught long on. It doesn't look particularly great, but the amount of innings he's won us in the past or games he's won us in the past. Um, like I said, there's not many cricketers like him in world cricket. So I'd rather have him on my team. I've said that before. You know, like I said, he, tomorrow morning, if you wanted one guy to go out there in the middle um, to try and get us up to a competitive score, it would be KP. Even when you and Kevin were there together, you just couldn't get on top of him, could you? Do you think it's just got to a stage in this series they're so confident they're absolutely on top of the game you just can't flick a switch they're not giving you anything um yeah australia have been outstanding um and they've worked really well as a bowling unit like i said it, test cricket you know it's fine if someone's bowling well from one end but if someone's letting the pressure go at the other end uh, and then it becomes that bit easier but what they've done very well is they've bowled in partnerships is what and what good teams do um so it has it has made it hard work and like i said they must be full of confidence uh, they deserve to be. They've out, you know, outplayed us in all three disciplines. So, um, you know, for us, it's a real scrap. But at least the guys are showing some fight. Um, you know, we've got to, certainly as a group, we've got to keep improving, you know, game by game and make sure that, you know, when it comes around again, 2015, that we're becoming a lot better side. Uh, and it, do, do you regard being named vice-captain as a significant thing? Yeah, it's a real honour. Yeah, when I got told that... Um, 
you know, that was going to happen, it was, yeah, it was certainly a, a nice thing to have. You know, obviously it means I've sort of grown into a, the role of a, a senior player and, you know, hopefully I'm showing an example for the younger guys going forward. And, you know, I want to be, um, you know, doing that, leading this group, helping Cookie as well, taking this group forward. You know, we've got some talented young players, but we're all going to need to stick together, um, not hide away from things that we're going to have to do um, and take this group forward. Will that, will, that, will that sort of change your demeanour on the field? I don't think so. It's always been, um, I don't think you need to be vice captain to be able to help the captain out or help the team or lead the team. I think we should all be doing that as individuals, trying to, um, you know, practice and, and do everything you do as a leader. And that's, that's the important thing. And uh, we need more people doing that, I think, at the minute. And like I said, uh, everyone's out there trying to help Cookie as much as you can. You don't need to be vice captain to do that.